Today, we are joined by creative entrepreneur and passive income evangelist. He's done a ton of things, can't spend all the time right now because there's too much value to get into. His current project, thelightbulbmoment.com, is committed to being the go-to community for creators with the goal of helping 1,000 creators just like you reach the $1 million milestone while also simultaneously donating $1 million to charity. Kevin Fromone, welcome to the show. It's great to have you. That has got to be the one of the most enthusiastic intros I have ever received. So <laughs> thank you for that. Well, I got to be honest, watching and consuming your content has gotten me fired up. So I'm excited to chat with you, Kevin. I want to start here because there's a few different things I want to cover, a few different topics, but I want to start here with the, the greatest challenge that creators face in 2020 and beyond. There's a lot of challenges. What, in your opinion, is the greatest challenge that we face as creators? Absolutely. I think one of the, the main things that I've seen over time and one of the reasons that I created Lightbulb Moment is to help creators get past this concept of simply selling their time and or services in exchange for money. Mm. And as a creator, creative myself, I've you know spent most of my career selling services, selling you know my hours for some price tag. And I see this constant hamster wheel, a uh, hamster wheel that so many creative types, whether they're photographers, whether they're designers, whether they're writers and so on and so forth, um, have just this recurring model where they're just like, okay, how much time can I spend during the day and how much money can I actually make as a result of spending that hour, two hours, three hours on a project? So where the struggle comes into play is, as anyone in this creative field, you have a finite amount of hours in the day and being able to leverage that creative skill set in this day and age as a digital economy that we, you and I are both a part of. I see so much opportunity on the other side that I, my whole thing is how can I help other creatives unlock their skill set to get off that hamster wheel and start to build in sort uh, build in like you said, passive income streams based on their creativity. So they're not um, constantly struggling to find that next client, um, build that next hour and so on and so forth. So I, I absolutely agree with you. I think hundred percent because one of the biggest challenges that we can get into is that hamster wheel of trading time for money. Um, but there's just so many tools out there that we can leverage to scale because you can't scale yourself. There's only one Kevin. There's only one you. How can we scale ourselves, right? So I want to talk about a few different strategies, but one of the things that you've had a lot of success with, Kevin, was creating digital products. And I'm just kind of curious, you were able to build up over a million dollars in passive income sales of your digital product. Can you kind of walk me through what your digital product was and share with uh, the audience here? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really a cool story because I somewhat fell into it. I, I have a creative background and I've been doing website design for, I don't know, almost two decades now. And so I come from a service agency sort of model where it was very much like, all right, you need a website. Here's how much I charge. Here's your website. And fast forward, I don't know, 10-ish years during my last uh, startup company, our marketing team was starting to leverage uh, a platform called HubSpot, which is an enterprise level CRM and CMS um, for companies to build marketing sites, create funnels, um, have an email drip um, mechanism, and basically manage their sales pipeline. So our marketing team was starting to use this platform. And being that I, at the time, was very much a WordPress guy. I was so resistant. I was like, no, we can't use this platform. We've got to use WordPress. I know it. I'll help you build these little landing pages and templates. We can do this and execute much faster. Um, that didn't pass and we wanted to actually utilize um, this platform. And so what I ended up doing is teaching myself how to use the platform by building these templates for my marketing team so that they could move fast have the sort of design aesthetic and user experience that I wanted our customers or potential customers to have. And so I built this um, during which I was listening to this uh, podcast called Smart Passive Income um, hosted by Pat Flynn, which uh, you may or may not be familiar with. Oh yeah. And so this little seed was like, okay, you've built this 
web template system, what if you were to submit it to their marketplace and start playing with this idea of passive income? All while I'm building this other startup company, um, completely different. And so I'm curious, uh, but before you go into that, what marketplace are you referring to? Is that on the actual platform itself? Is kind of like a tutorial for people? It is. So HubSpot itself mm -hmm. has a marketplace where they sell different assets. Those assets could be a, a template or a theme or a plugin, much like you would purchase a theme for a WordPress yeah. website or, you know, all these other sorts of um, web hosting companies that exist out there. Typically they have their own marketplace. So right. I ended up submitting to that marketplace. Cool. Um, oh, it didn't take, but maybe a few days I made my first sale, made 120 bucks while I was sleeping. And I was like, Whoa, there's something <laughs> really to this. Uh, and so I just kept like chipping away, wake up, you know, I would wake up really early in the morning, just chip away on this little pr side project, this little side hustle, because it was helping my own creative itch uh, and also starting to fill up my bank account and, you know, the backgrounds. And so literally like a month went by and I had made my first, I think, grand in a month passively. The next month it was three grand. I think by like th month three or four, it was around five grand. And suddenly I was like just climbing up, um, you know, from 10 grand to 20 grand to 30 grand a month. And now I'm honing in around like 50 grand a month passive from this digital product that I've just continued to invest, you know, time and, and energy into creating something exceptional. Um, albeit no marketing, no advertising. It is strictly all um, uh, basically profit. Yeah, profit off that revenue. So it's been an exciting and, and and fun roller coaster ride of just building these products, making them great, and and living this passive income lifestyle. That's absolutely absolutely amazing. And I, I think there's a couple things that I really love about this, Kevin. Is a you were solving a problem that both you and your team had, right? So you saw the problem, you said, "I'm going to fix it." Um, but and you're probably aware of this working with so many creators. And quite frankly, if you want to get mentorship from Kevin, you can get that on his website or with his community at lightbulbmoment.com where you can get, get really in and, and, and get that support. But I'm sure you're, you're, you're familiar that it doesn't always work out like that, right? A lot of people, they grind, they build up this great project and it's, oh, they're so proud of it and they post it. They don't sell anything, right? What do you think yep. was so special about your unique templates that actually made them sell? Was it the right time, the right place, the right niche, the right band branding? How did you make it fly? Good question. One, I obviously just saw a problem in their marketplace. And that problem at the time was a lack of design excellence mm. that would meet my own criteria. So I saw a real need for quality design, quality user experience within the templates and or themes that um, happened to be in the marketplace at that time. So obviously there's this kernel of a problem there. And that's one piece of it for any of you or your audience that are, that are listening to this right now. It's understanding the actual problem that exists and how you can create a unique solution to that problem. In my case, my unique solution was, uh, you know, a, a really keen eye and attention to detail with the design aesthetic of this web theme um, along with that user experience. But I think where the special sauce came in is when I approached building a, a little mini brand around it that was centered around creating a personal connection, being that my face was very much a part of that brand, creating video content, and really being at the forefront of this product that I was selling, not hiding it behind some ambiguous brand name or ambiguous product name. I was very front and center, which over the course of time, I've learned has bred a lot of trust mm. and a lot of credibility in the product that I'm selling. And so people would come and they'd see this product, this techie web product that in most cases, you know, there's a tons of them. But then they see this charismatic dude behind it who's up front and center talking about the product and um, the support that comes behind the product. And there's this trust built in that, I really think has allowed me to excel um, in this business over time. Love that. So it's it's all about building your your personal brand, right? It's it's not. I, I love that because I think 
that's one of the, the biggest mistakes we can make when building our creative business is just have a generic website without your face. Like every once in a while I'm doing a website review for someone and I look and I'm like, there's, there's something missing. They're like, what, what is it? It's you. There's no you here, you know? So I, I, I love that. I love that. Um, so now I want to kind of segue a little bit into your community, the light bulb moment, because you know, a lot of things that you've already talked about, Kevin, are very common mistakes that I think people uh, can make, specifically creators. A lot of creators are just thinking about creating. They're not thinking about the business side and the passive income side. They just want to create. They're not thinking about about the money. Show me the money, right? So yeah. what are some, give me a story. What's something that's happened inside of your community light bulb moment? A story where someone's actually come in, didn't know what the heck they were doing, and then a switch flipped and they were actually able to create some sort of income through the help in the community. Sure. So this is this is actually one of our founding members, and the the story that comes to mind is this uh, woman. Her name is Lo, and Lo is a designer, um, but comes from the standpoint of branding and messaging and honing in on your copy. So she was just starting to uh, enter into creating her own web design style business, and. Early on in the community, she was starting to put together this long document that would help new clients and or customers on board with her, where she would get a sense of what their brand values were and a, just a laundry list of you know questions and answers and this basically what was just going to be her onboarding like um, questionnaire but was ripe for an amazing digital course or mm. online product. And so when she had presented it to the community to gather some feedback on like, hey, what do you think about this intake form for my new clients? Um, astoundingly, everyone in the community, including myself, were, were just blown away and were impressing upon her. What you have here is the outline, the script, the foundation for an amazing digital product to help other people who can't necessarily afford to work with her one-on-one, -on -one, but to move into building a more intentional brand, website, et cetera, with the help of this aid that she had created. And so it's little stories like that where, like I was mentioning, creative types um, are just more so interested in like, okay, I, I have this time, I have this service, I'll you know, sell, I'll sell that to a client where Lo, in her case, was now able to see the amount of work that she did up front on this document um, could actually result in her building in these sorts of passive and lucrative uh, income streams. And so while I would love to tell you right now, like, oh, she's blown it out the you know, door and, you know, it's been some incredible launch. Uh, I can't tell you that yet um, because she's still in the process of building that out. But that was one of her little light bulb moments, if I will, um, within our community that have helped her unlock this new idea of how she could approach business. Really, really love that. Really love that. And, and I, I think that's another real challenge that we have as creatives is actually getting useful, constructive criticism. Because most of the time when you talk to someone, they're like, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I like that, right? But they right. can't actually <laughs> help you refine what you're trying to execute on, um, in, at least in a positive way. It's either that's good or that sucks, right? There's no like, here's how you can make it better. Um, so I think exactly. have, yeah, having having a good community is is absolutely crucial, which I think leads us to one of the bigger problems with the internet right now. There are communities everywhere. There's your Instagram community, there's your Facebook group, there's your YouTube, there's communities everywhere. But you've decided to use a program called Circle for your light bulb moment, if you would. So I'm kind of curious, what's been your experience with this platform and in, in actually keeping the community engaged on the platform? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. So first and foremost, yeah, Circle, uh, which is at circle.so, is awesome. I mean, this is a this is a new startup, young guys who are near and dear to my heart as other designers and user experience professionals. So like these guys rock, um, and they're constantly creating feedback opportunities for people like me uh, and other community facilitators to make uh, an amazing experience. Now, whenever you're building a community that is out of someone's normal um, habit of maybe checking Facebook or even nowadays maybe having Slack open on our, mm -hmm. uh, on our computers since we're all working remote, 
it breathes a lot of challenges as it pertains to engagement and retention. Uh, and that was something going into um, this decision to, to build my community on Circle that I knew I was going to come up against because we're basically trying to create a new habit in people opening this app and opening this community. Whereas if you were to build your community on Facebook groups, well, chances are they already have Facebook open. And so they're more inclined to then go in and engage with your group. However, that comes with its own set of challenges. And to me, having a, a community that was more about a focused um, quality conversations that weren't short and non-focused, which I started to find in a lot more of the Facebook groups that I was playing around in and experimenting with prior to making the decision to move to Circle. And so to bring this, you know, um, back to how do I start to think about engagement and creating that habit? Frankly, it is hard. And it is uh, something that I'm constantly experimenting with um, within my community because the first six months, and I'm experiencing this right now, of any community, creating those habits and creating those patterns of people coming back is a, ch is a real challenge. And so one of the things that I've started to institute is weekly check-ins, mm. simple ways for the community members to come in, um, uh, express what their goals for the week might be um, at the beginning of the week. And then in the mid middle of the week, we will typically have some sort of engaging question um, that we pose to the community that allows the community to offer their own experience or their own advice or their own suggestion on a tool that they use. Some, you know, some question that's additive to the actual community experience, um, but creates that that secondary touch point for someone to go, oh, I got the answer to this. I'll log in and you know submit my answer. And then at the end of the week, we'll have a you know weekly wins sort of prompt where we have people come in and say, okay, this week I crushed my goals. I you know did this, that, and the other big big wins, small wins, things like that. And so it's really about creating these like touch points throughout the week to, to create those sorts of habitual patterns and people coming back to uh, the community app itself. Um, it's not easy. Like I said, this is, this is something that uh, I'm constantly working through and finding new ways to engage the community. And it's actually a big part of my initiative um, come Q4 of this, uh, of this year to, to build in newer ways because those ways in which will work um, at the beginning of the experience tend to degrade over time. And so you have to constantly be thinking of, of new and interesting ways to, to engage people. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the key is you, you got to stay a step ahead. And I totally agree with you. Like I, I, I love Facebook groups. I think they serve a great purpose, but there's just so much noise there. And it's, it's really hard to actually, I think, create a deep connection with your, with your fellow creatives. Right. So I think an idea like circle where it's a, a specific app specific to your, to your family or to your tribe or to your community is, is really powerful. I, 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 and correct me if I'm wrong, but you've got people, all sorts of different types of creatives in your group, right? You got podcasters, YouTubers, graphic designers. How do you, I mean, I guess this is, I'm kind of answering my own question, but how do you kind of bring them all together so that they're actually all able to help one another? Is it because they're all kind of in the same field or how does that, how does that work? How do they build each other up? You know what? I'm going to be, I'm going to be hundred percent honest with you because I am not about, um, you know, BSing you or your audience. Appreciate that. Um, it hasn't worked. It hasn't worked okay. to be quite frank. Um, up until probably this last week, I realized, um, quite, I don't know, quite abruptly that I, when launching this initial community, my, my net was quite wide. So mm -hmm. just like you said, I started to bring on podcasters and different entrepreneurs, course creators, all under the guise of creator. Mm -hmm. And so over the course of the past two weeks, um, as I've done uh, a retrospective, which is something that is incredibly important in any sort of business product or even community, to look back and see what's worked and what actually doesn't work. And I started to realize that as I had a pretty broad net of this type of creator, the engagement um, started to drop a little bit. And so I've since started to refine 
who the community is for and you become a lot more hyper focused on exactly what type of creatives are going to be best suited to derive value and also add value to the community. Um, and since honed down to more designer, photographer, YouTuber, videographer types of people um, so that it's, it's a little bit more consistent in the experience that people are all having on those different levels. Mm. And so I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, I, I want to be real with, with you and with your audiences, you know, there's going to be these little missteps along any journey of building anything. And it's how you pay attention to those, um, react to those, and then take action um, as a result of whatever it is that you're learning. So this next kind of phase and evolution of the community is becoming a lot more hyper-focused on exactly who it is for. So I, I appreciate that. I think that's, I think what you just did there, Kevin, is something that a lot of people get wrong. Um, it's putting on this facade, people put on this facade that they've got it all figured out, that they know all the answers, that here's my Lamborghini and here's my private jet before security comes and kicks me off the launch pad, <laughs> right? But I think one of the most important things that we can do as creators that I'm learning as I fail forward is bringing people on this journey, right? I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in this journey with you. Let's go together. Um, and I, I just think that that's incredibly, incredibly important. Um, but I, you know, honestly, I also think that, you know, when you, when you start niche down like YouTube and graphic design and video and bringing that together, you can always add new aspects as, as time grows. Cause I mean, right now I think is, is a better time than ever to try to look, we wear so many hats as creators. It's, it's just, it's, it's really crazy. Um, before we get to the rapid fire here, before I, we get there, I also want to know a little bit about charity because one of your main goals, and I look at all your websites, everything's about, nothing is like you're paying me. Everything is, you're going to, we're going to put it to charity. Why is that so important to you, Kevin, in the light bulb moment community? Why is charity so important? Yeah, it really, it comes down to one of my main values and what I want to instill in the community. And that is the aspect of, of giving back and giving back at some level of scale, not only scale, but also in a more one-on-one -on -one sort of scenario. And so as I started to think about the you know, successes, the epic failures, and all of the lessons that I've learned um, over the course of my tenure so far, I've... I've set myself up um, to this point where I want to do something to better um, people that might be on the same path before me without any sort of strings attached. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with my current business, this web theme with past business businesses that I've started, I've positioned myself in a, a way in which I can afford to do that. Um, and that just goes to further strengthen this concept of building in passive income streams. If I was selling my hours, you know, it'd be really hard for me to dedicate more and more of my time to this community. Um, this is and, also a, you know, a, a really charge for it. Yeah. And well, it's also a really popular trend just from a business standpoint. You know, you're seeing companies like, like Tom's, I think led the way with this and, um, there, there's a bunch of millennial style companies that, that are leveraging, you know, the power of, of giving back, um, which, which I think is powerful from a, from a business branding standpoint. It also just makes you feel good. It makes you feel. It absolutely <laughs> does. Like nothing makes me feel better. And it's cool if the whole community gets involved and, and yeah. we all submit charities and, and vote on those charities. So it's not just me saying, all right, we're given to this community or we're given to this charity. It's, um, it's really a collective experience. Yeah. I think that, so I didn't even touch on that, but I think that's one of the smartest things potentially that you're doing with the light bulb moment is building the community not around, not just around the common theme of creative and being creative, but mm -hmm. on, on giving back super, super powerful. Y'all, you definitely got to listen and learn more from what Kevin's doing. And, uh, you know, it's very, very reasonable to join this exclusive community. And I think that you would definitely benefit from getting the constructive criticism, um, both from Kevin, from own. And his uh, community over there at Lightbulb Moment. All right, Kevin, I want to ask you a couple rapid fire questions here before I let you go. So let me first Let's start with a must have business item that everyone should have that costs less than 50 bucks. Costs less than 50 bucks. Okay. Um, one of my favorite um, things, you know what? I was going to say, like, right off the top of my head, uh, one of my journals, um, just to, to write and create 
you know, different ideas and just get those ideas out of my head. I could have sworn there was something else on the top of my mind that was like even cooler than that, but I'm drawing a blank in this rapid fire scenario at this very moment in time. That's why we do so it rapid. <laughs> I'll, I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that if I remember it. <laughs> That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Uh, if you were to wake up tomorrow and you could only do one business task, what would you do? Create a video. I would teach something and or um, communicate something of value out to my audience. I love doing that. So like, absolutely. If that's all I had to do, 100%. Love it. And you can see all of Kevin's videos on YouTube as well, where he is crushing it, crushing it on YouTube. Uh, Kevin, if you, if you had 10 minutes with yourself 10 years ago, what would you tell yourself? The first thing I would tell myself is it's all going to be okay. And I, and I would probably emphasize that um, quite a bit only because the road of entrepreneurship, the road of uh, being ambitious and seeking something that doesn't exist is a pretty treacherous one at times. And reminding myself that there everything is going to be okay in the end uh, so that I could take that forward is probably something that I would really have appreciated hearing during the hard times. Um, and so I would, I would tell myself that first and foremost. And then I would also remind myself that it's okay to find opportunities just to play and not work, work, work. Uh, mm -hmm. I have been in that kind of work, work, work mode for a long period of my, my life. And if there's anything that I would want to redo or be reminded of early is breathe, play, because that's going to make um, everything else, one, feel so much better, and two, be a lot more sustainable over time. Two common pitfalls. Kevin said it. I agree with it. Kevin, <laughs> thanks so much, brother. Thank you, man.